Hello, David here, and the project for today is fixing a loose seat in a C5 Corvette. This is a 1997 Corvette. And what happens when you bring the car to a stop, the seat moves forward. It slides forward about a quarter to three-eighths of an inch, and the bushings in the rail are worn out, so the seat has to come out. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the target top to facilitate the removal of the seat. I'm going to start with the passenger seat. And then I'm going to use the motor to raise the seat as high as it will go. And then I'll move the seat forward to get the rear bolts. There's two bolts in the rear and then I'll move the seat back to get the front bolts. And I don't know if it's advantageous to end off with the seat to the rear or the seat to the front. Need to do some research on that. The front seat bolts are covered with these plastic covers and it's got these retaining clips that you just pop out. I don't know what the proper name for it is. But just pop it out like that. Can you see that? And then slide off the cover. Definitely slides because it catches on this this back part here, and that catches on. Can you see that? That catches on this tab over here. These four bolts are 15 millimeters. Okay, on to the rear bolts. It's always good to have a third hand. On the underside of the seat, on the right side of the passenger seat, you'll see the electrical connector that has to be unhooked. And it's right there. So the connector has a metal clip that holds it to the underside of the seat rail and then there's a plastic tab on the opposite side of the metal clip. Push that to release. And it... I don't know how I could have lifted that seat out without the target top off because I had to get all that space through the target top opening to get that seat out without scratching anything. But anyway now is a good time to vacuum the carpets and get all that Scunge out from under the seats. Is scunge a word? Okay, I've got the seat mounted on a table. Unrelated to my problem, some of the other things that could go wrong are these clevis pins, and there are kits available for replacing those. Also, if we turn around here, notice this web. There's one on each end, right there. Those sometimes bend or break because they're made out of aluminum and there are kits for replacing those. And if you have a vet that you bought from another owner, if you take a magnet to it, that'll let you know that it's been replaced. If a magnet sticks to it, it's, it's not stock and it's been replaced. Also, this rivet right here has to be drilled out and a screw placed in there. And here's the one on the other side. This one's unpainted. I don't know if this is necessary, but I marked the rails with tape to get them back in the same position. I've never done this project before, but I want to make sure everything's back in its proper position when I do get back to reassembly. Primarily because these threaded rods inside are different. You can tell by looking in the witness holes here this is a right hand thread and the one on this side is a left hand thread so you don't want to get them mixed up otherwise the seat's adjustment is going to bind. I'm going to start by loosening these two screws over here. They are Torx T25s. The 
The screw holding the block in from the back is a Torx T30. I'm going to move the camera around to show you that. And back to the other side. Let's see if I can push this up out from the bottom. This flexible piece is a transmission line that turns the screw. This must be a differential because the force comes from the side, goes at a right angle, and up to the screw. And the, some type of bushing in here. Yeah, I'm going to push this up from the bottom and grab it at the top. go that's it I thought there was a washer here but I guess there is no washer here and this part I thought might come pop out loose but doesn't seem to come out okay here's the business end this is the part that I don't know it decomposed there's a washer here and a washer here that decomposed. Parts of this one is still here. That's what gives you your looseness. That's one side of the loose seat problem. And I see I'm at the end of the travel. I was going to mark this, this rod with tape here to get it back in place. I'm going to have to screw all the way through the shaft and get this off. Yeah, that's pretty much the end of the travel. So, I'm not going to mark it. This piece just looks like a piece of pot metal. Okay, let's screw it out. Give it a good scrub down with the brake clean. Notice that incline. See that peak? That goes outside. Don't put it on the bottom or you'll have problems. Yeah, that's pieces of the old washer. These are my replacement washers and they're nylon. They have to be nylon so they don't degrade again. Dimensions are three quarter of an inch with a five sixteenths diameter, inside diameter. Thickness is one eighth of an inch 
and that's the closest I could get. They are not the proper dimensions to fit. Here's the shaft, as you can see. It won't go all the way on. As far as the block goes, I could get one in, but not quite the other. I'm going to have to sand it a little bit, but you do want it tight enough that you have to hammer them in because any looseness is going to show up in the seat. The seat will be loose. Also, if you look at the profile, the profile has to be brought down to match a profile of this tent-shaped top. It cannot stand out above or it'll bind. Am I focusing? I decided to bore the inner hole because there's a lot of material to be removed so I did a shallow three-quarter inch diameter hole in this piece of wood and I have a step drill. I'm going to drill out the center. The heat from the drill bit kind of misshapen the washer. If you look at the difference. So I used the Dremel to do the rest of the way. And I think I'll use the Dremel on the next one. Here's how the first one fits. Okay, there's a piece with the Dremel compared to the one I drilled. It's just fine. Now to hog out the other six. Okay. I got the diameters to the proper dimension and I sanded the tops flat. I don't think I really need a peaked shape to match the peak of this block. I just did it flat because I think it just needs to clear this block. As long as it's clear with the top of this block, there shouldn't be any interference. So that's what I'm going to do. And then we're going to sand the sides a little bit. And it's still, still a very tight fit. When I did a test fit and I pounded that second washer and it's really tight as it's supposed to be but then I find it's hard to position the washer to get the threaded rod to go through both sides and I see where those kits from the Corvette parts suppliers come in real handy because those washers are square they fit right in the block and they don't move around they stay where they're supposed to be and the hole is centered so I'm going to uh, pound this in and not only that, I have to line up the flat spot with the top. So it might be worth the uh, few extra dollars. And I figured if I can't line up the top, I could certainly dremel it while it's in place, I think. if I get a straight shot through there. That's no, not catching. That's what I'm talking about. The washer is too far over to the left. But you do want it tight. Okay, this side caught. And that side caught. Very good. Let's see if I need to dremel anything. 
Maybe that top corner there. That's it. Put a light film of lithium grease on the threads. Okay, I'm ready to install the part. I've got this at the end of the thread. I'm gonna put it in from the top. It goes this way. This end could go towards the back. This end will be facing me. And the transmission has to go in the end here. Okay, the transmission's in. Needs to come down a little further. I had a little resistance. I had trouble getting this shaft into the threaded end, and it turned out I had to turn the threaded shaft about an eighth of a turn to get that to come in. I was wondering why it kept bouncing back and this shaft is kind of springy but I turned the shaft just a little bit and I, this came all the way down and now I've got the screws at the top started. I could start tightening those. I'll go to the back and get that back one. There, tight. Okay, I got the left side done. Now I'm going to go over to the right side. There's no need to film that again. It's going to be the same process, except that the threads are going to be left-hand threads. And uh, I'll take it over once again when I'm done with the other side. Before I remove the assembly for the second rail, I decided to put a little dab of nail polish here on the threaded end of the rod just to help me locate the position on this flexible drive shaft here because it is a square end and it needs a one or two degree adjustment to get it set in the proper place. Before you can remove the assembly on this rail you have to remove the clip that holds the wire up. Got a little piece of tape where that goes. It's the large hole over the two smaller holes. And for indexing purposes, this aluminum block is threaded right up to the end of the threads. Up to this eye bolt. And you can see the degrega degradation of the rubber spacers there. Okay, I've got that second rail installed, which is the right rail on the passenger seat. Also, that tab of nail polish on the threaded rod was not any help because after I disassembled the rod I cleaned it with acetone and it knocked off the polish but I did run it all the way to the end and I had problems getting it connected to this threaded shaft at the bottom which is down here right under there and I had to take it out I had to turn it a degree it wouldn't go back in. I had to take it out again. I had to turn it another degree. It wouldn't go in. And then I had to take it out and just play with it. Got in a good place where it was happy. And it went in. So it uh, doesn't always go in the first time. I still think I had an easier time because I had the seat run all the way forward before I took it out of the car. 
if it was back or in the middle then you'd have to either put tape on the threads or count the turns to get it off that threaded shaft and um, I don't trust tape because it's greasy and tape doesn't stick to grease and then if you were to to wash it with solvent that solvent would probably take the tape off or move the tape I wouldn't trust it so I like this procedure with the seat forward and then you could just run that threaded rod all the way to the end I've got the seat installed all snugly. The only problem that I ran into was that electrical connector under here. Getting that clip in place was a little tricky. There's not enough space. What I did was before I had the bolts in place, I rested the right side of the rail on a... I have this round steel collar from my shop press. It's about two inches wide. I just rested the rail on that so I could get my hands under there. And got full motion. Got up and down. Wait, does it have tilt? I didn't know it had tilt. Oh, you learn something new every day. Alrighty. Now I just need to find the crash test dummy so we could test drive it. Now for the test drive, I have my crash test dummy with me. Little iodine. You ready? I'm ready. Are you strapped in? I'm strapped in. Here we go. My seat slid. How about yours? No, no, no movement. Wow, it's fixed. Yay. So that's going to wrap up my video. I don't need to show you me doing the driver's seat, which is my next project. I'm going to do that next. You guys already know how to do it. I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and ring that bell for more great videos from David GPO. Here is some bonus footage. Now that I've done three rails, I have a lot more experience and I have some tips that might be useful for you. This is the second seat, the driver's seat. I've already done this rail right here. I'm going to do this one next. I've decided to use this tape that I use for indexing to keep it whole. I did not slid it. I found that I don't need to slide the rail to get the, the threaded shaft in place. And it also helped me by holding it up, kind of kept this from sliding in the way. So also, uh, it kept it indexed. So uh, I don't recommend slitting the tape. I would leave it whole. Also lining up the threads on the block is pretty critical. So when you remove it, make sure that you count how many turns it takes for the between the block and the end of the threads. In this case, the block was right up against the threads. It didn't take any additional turns for the block because it was at the complete end at the top of the threads. And when I installed it, it turned out that I did have to turn the threads very slightly, maybe a degree off of the end of the, end of the, end of the threaded shaft. And also, it's hard to line up this non-threaded portion to come through this pushing here and uh, it's greasy so if you need to turn it a degree or so in either direction you just can't turn it while it's in here you have to push it up out through the top get it out and turn it because I have fresh grease on there so it's hard to turn and it's kind of messy so uh, I might want to use a paper towel or something to, to turn it if you have to do any adjustments and also if you have fat fingers, you might have to get a screwdriver in there to, to lift it up so you could get it centered into that bushing.
Regarding the fitting of the bushings, I have streamlined that process as well. I am filing a flat on one end of the washer initially, and I'm doing two washers at once. If you can see that, I've got two there. You're going to have to believe me. Of course, with the flat end of the washer, I can make sure that it sits low enough that it mates with the threaded rod that's going to go through it. However, there's one thing I noticed. Since the washers are round, I can't tell when you're looking from the top and you've got it partially assembled, I can't tell if the washer turns out of position or not. So what I've been doing, I've been putting a mark of nail polish on the opposite end of the flat, like right there. That way I'll know if it turns. When the nail polish dries, I partially assemble it. Then I back off until the threaded end right there clears the threaded block so I could push the next washer in. So this washer does not get sanded at all. Now I could set this aside work on this washer. This is the one that will get sanded. I suppose you could use a belt sander to save some time, but then you run the risk of sanding the washer down too thin and then it'll be loose, or sanding the skin off of your fingers, which that prospect does not make me happy. So sanding this is going to take about takes about 15 or 20 minutes. And you can either sand one side or both sides, it doesn't matter. You just got to get the proper thickness so that it fits in this space right in there. Let's do a test fit. Yeah, I found if it only goes in a quarter of the way, it's not enough. I gotta sand it down a little more so it goes in at least halfway. Let's try it again. I'll try to screw it further, see if it goes through. 
Ah, success, it goes through. If it doesn't go through, you might have to disassemble it again and it's going to be tight and you're going to need your pocket screwdriver. You got to pry on this end and then this end and this end and this end until you can pry it out. And you're either going to have to dremel the inside diameter hole or you're going to have to dremel around the outside to get the washer to come down a little more. Or if you weren't turning the washer occasionally while you were sanding the face of the washer, it might be tapered. If mean, it's tapered at the bottom, it's going to go in easy, and then the rest of the way it's going to go in too difficult. It's going to be too thick. You're going to have to take it out and get the face parallel with the other face. But in this case, I don't have to disassemble it. I've got the two dots at the top, which means my flats are at the bottom. Now I'm going to take the Dremel. I'm going to Dremel off. I'm going to Dremel off the, uh, the profile of the washer where it's sticking above over the top. You just want to get the nylon washer, not the aluminum block. Looks like I hit the aluminum block right there. I got plenty of clearance. Okay, so what's left is putting a little lithium grease on the threads of this. I'm going to run it all the way up to here and assemble it. So if you stayed with me this long, I want to thank you for watching. Bye now.